Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, the dragon dinosaur. Since the beginning of humanity, we have believed in dragons. They appear in ancient Mesopotamian art and literature, and all early cultures had stories of powerful gods slaying enormous serpents. But where did these stories come from? The most likely explanation is that ancient people came across real, enormous dinosaur bones all over the world. These giant beasts would have made people think that they were real animals and that they were just hiding or sleeping. Everywhere from Asia to Europe to the Americas developed their own stories and variations of dragons and what they looked like. Some had wings and some didn't. Some lived in caves and others in the sea. Here is a perfect example of a real-life dragon. Researchers in Argentina have discovered the fossils of a gigantic dragon that terrorized the skies 86 million years ago. The animal was a species of flying reptile that grew to be the size of a school bus. It's been named the Dragon of Death. It actually belongs to the family of pterosaurs, and its scientific name is Thanatos Draken Amaru. This creature predates the first birds, and it was one of the very first gigantic beasts with wings to hunt for food. Its fossils were uncovered in the Andes Mountains, preserved in rock from the Cretaceous period just 20 million years before the asteroid wiped out almost all living creatures on the planet. Sadly, the Dragon of Death probably didn't breathe fire, but it did look a lot like a dragon, and it could also walk around on two legs and search for prey. Coming across these giant bones in real life, you could see how people would believe that these creatures weren't just legends, but that they were actually real. Number 9. Mermaids and Mermen It wasn't that long ago that pretty much everybody believed in merfolk or merpeople, mermaids and mermen. Almost every civilization in every corner of the globe had some kind of myth surrounding humanoid beings who lived in the ocean. In Arabia, mermaids were described as having moon faces and women's hair, but their hands were stuck in their bellies and they had a giant fish tail instead of legs. In fact, the legend of the mermaid goes all the way back to the Babylonians thousands of years ago. One of their deities was called Era, and he was a fish god with the body of a man and the bottom half of a fish. In African mythology, there is Mami Wata, who is also beautiful, with the top half of a woman and the bottom half of a fish. But she is a water spirit that will seduce and then destroy you on a whim. Mermaids can be found in Greek mythology, Syrian mythology, and pretty much everywhere else. In medieval days, mermaids were considered very real. They were placed in the same category as other residents of the oceans, like whales and dolphins. The people of coastal towns across the world even told stories of encountering these bizarre creatures. In the 1600s, a mermaid supposedly entered Holland through a dike, ended up stranded, and was taken by the citizens to a nearby lake and nursed back to health. This mermaid then became a citizen, learned to speak Dutch, did household chores, and converted to Catholicism. In 1614, a sea captain off the coast of Newfoundland named John Smith witnessed a mermaid swimming in the open ocean. She had long green hair, was surprisingly attractive, and the captain fell in love with her, even though she had the bottom half of a fish. While these accounts may seem like nonsense, there are certainly enough of them to make you wonder if mermaids were actually real. It's most likely that people saw strange things at sea and couldn't understand what it was. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. The Siberian Unicorn Unicorns were real, in a sense, but went extinct about 29,000 years ago. According to National Geographic, the unicorn was a very real animal that lived in what is now Siberia for roughly 350,000 years. The only thing about the Siberian unicorn is that it doesn't look like the fantasy portrayal of a unicorn. It's really an ancient beast that had a long horn like a rhino and shared the planet with humans for a brief period of time. It's called the Elasmotherium sibiricum, and scientists recently discovered its fossilized skull in the country of Kazakhstan. The fossil dates back to a time when our ancient ancestors were living as primitive hunter-gatherers. The beast was around 12 feet long and weighed about 4 tons. It was completely covered in shaggy, coarse hair and didn't look anything like a white stallion with a magical horn. That being said, it did have a great big single horn that stuck out from its forehead. Ancient people undoubtedly told stories about this mythical beast they had seen, and those stories evolved over the years. 
Stories began to spread, and then sailors from Europe began bringing back narwhal tusks, which looked like fantasy unicorn horns. The Catholic Church began to adopt the symbolism of the unicorn, and the rest is history. Number 7. The Extinct Bigfoot Just like unicorns, Bigfoot was a very real animal. Or at least the closest thing we've ever had to Bigfoot was real. It's called Gigantopithecus blacki, and it was bigger than any great ape that ever lived, and about twice the size of an adult human. These were enormous apes that lived in the forests of Southeast Asia, but went extinct hundreds of thousands of years ago. Of course, that would mean these huge monsters have never actually been spotted in the wilderness of North America. But they did look exactly like what most people think Bigfoot looks like today. They were about 10 feet tall, weighed roughly 600 pounds, and were completely covered in hair. It was almost like a mix between a grizzly bear and an orangutan. One of the biggest issues with these animals is that very little evidence of them has actually been found. Not much except pieces of teeth and four partial jawbones. This has made it difficult for scientists to paint a full picture of their history. Could it be that somehow a small pocket of these ridiculously huge ancient apes survived all the way until modern times? It's unlikely, but those who claim to have seen it think it might actually be the case. Number 6. The Thunderbirds Native American legends from the Great Plains, from the Pacific Northwest, and even from the Great Lakes region all tell similar stories about a mythical creature known as a Thunderbird. It was a kind of massive bird which flew in ahead of large thunderstorms. Motifs of these legendary creatures can be found from pretty much every tribe in North America. It's made experts wonder if giant birds truly coexisted with Native Americans thousands of years ago. This also begs the question, where did the Thunderbirds go? And could they still exist today? In Native American lore, the Thunderbirds appear when thunder and lightning comes. They are seen right before a storm and always in the spring and summer months. The birds are described as being bigger than most, with unbelievably long wingspans. In fact, they are said to be so massive that when they fly over the sun, they blot out all its light. Fossil evidence shows that there was an extremely large bird living in North America many years ago. It's called a pteratorn, a family of extinct vultures that had wingspans of nearly 20 feet. They were so big that experts today doubt they were even able to fly. And considering they went extinct a few thousand years ago, it is possible that they flew over the heads of Native Americans. However, these birds had likely vanished by the time Europeans showed up. Number 5. The Legendary Sea Serpent If you look at maps from back in the Middle Ages, you'll notice that every single one of them is decorated with pictures of sea monsters. For example, the 1539 Carta Marina clearly shows beasts like sea serpents lurking out in the water and waiting to attack unwary sailors. But were these creatures simply decorative, put on the maps by cartographers for a bit of flourish? Or were these creatures real? The truth is that some of them were definitely real. And you know there are many mysterious things in the sea. Imagine back then! In 1734, there was a missionary by the name of Hans Egede. He was sailing off Greenland's coast when he witnessed what he described as a most terrible creature. It lifted its head so high from the water that it was taller than the crow's nest on the mast of their ship. It was also longer than their entire ship and looked like some kind of giant aquatic snake. While this may or may not have happened, the creature the missionary appeared to be describing was an oarfish. The oarfish can grow to be over 50 feet long and weigh nearly 400 pounds. To give you some perspective, that's over 20 feet longer than the biggest snake in the world. If you were an ancient mariner and saw one of these creatures in the ocean, you too would think it was a sea monster. Because really, that's exactly what it is. What makes the oarfish so monstrous is also the fact that it swims vertically, unlike other fish that swim horizontally. Instead of swimming through the water like a shark, it swims up and down by using its long red dorsal fin. This means that if somebody had actually witnessed one in the water, it would have looked even longer, like a huge sea serpent rising from the depths. Number 4. The Basilisk The basilisk was a monster feared throughout Europe and North Africa for centuries. Like many of the ancient Mediterranean monsters, it was a hybrid beast. This creature was hatched from an egg laid by a rooster, 
then incubated by a toad. It had toxic breath and a venomous bite, and it could kill just by looking at you. It was a weird combination of a rooster and a snake. Weirdly enough, the basilisk's only weakness was the weasel, which was for some reason impervious to its venom. The first mention of the basilisk came around the year 79 AD in the Roman book Natural History, a compilation of natural wonders put together by a man named Pliny the Elder. According to him, the basilisk was actually quite small. It was only about 12 fingers in length, yet astoundingly deadly. It could supposedly kill the shrubs by just breathing on them. This was a small creature that was so toxic it literally killed nature wherever it went. The Romans believed it was entirely evil and that it came from somewhere in Libya. In fact, the Romans believed the Sahara Desert had once been a fertile land until an infestation of basilisks ruined everything and turned the place into a forsaken wasteland. What we can take away from the historical accounts is that the basilisk probably wasn't part rooster and part snake, but 100% snake. In fact, it may very well have been a real snake that the Romans were really scared of. There was supposedly a hunt in 1587 for the very last great basilisk. This story is a bit obscure, but there are historical accounts of it happening. Locals in Poland got together to hunt down and kill the very last toxic basilisk serpent. When the creature was found to be in the city of Warsaw, it caused such panic that the government called an emergency meeting. An expert hunter had to dress himself from head to toe in leather to keep himself safe from the thing, and then tracked it down to a basement and killed it with a pitchfork. We don't know if any of this really did happen, but it seems possible. It could have been some venomous snake that scientists don't know about today. Something so awful, it terrorized Europe for hundreds of years. Number 3. The Chupacabra The Chupacabra has just been spotted in Amarillo, Texas. It was caught on camera at 1.25 in the morning on May 21, 2022. Oddly enough, it was spotted walking past a barrier fence at the Amarillo Zoo. It certainly wasn't a person, it definitely wasn't a coyote, and it appeared to be some strange mix between the two. It walked on two legs, was clearly covered in wolfish hair, and people ruled that it was too small to be a fully grown man in a suit. Of course, there is no way to be sure that this was the legendary chupacabra. But there have been so many chupacabra sightings in Texas recently that it's hard to not at least consider. But just what is the chupacabra? It's kind of like a vampire wolf, a fabled creature that was first sighted in Puerto Rico, but has since been seen all over the southern United States and Mexico. Legend says the chupacabra is about the size of a small bear, and that it drinks the blood of goats and chickens to survive. While this last part might not be totally true, there is no denying that there is some kind of weird animal stalking the woods and ranches of the south. There are more sightings of the chupacabra than there are of Bigfoot, and the video footage is way more convincing. Number 2. The Australian Bunyip The Bunyip is a bizarre creature from Australian folklore that scientists believe probably did once exist. It was kind of like an oversized rat that hung around waterholes and made really loud noises. In 1846, there was an account by local indigenous groups that described bunyips as being as tall as gum trees. They also said that the bunyip would pull the roots out of those trees to eat. This is interesting because there is actually an animal still alive that does this exact same thing. It's called the marsupial taper, and it rips the roots out of gum trees. It also looks extremely strange. For people who weren't used to seeing these creatures, they probably would have looked like monsters. Considering the bunyip is described as a beast that lurks in swamps but has no supernatural powers, it makes sense that it was based on a real animal. And tapirs, with their floppy noses, weird head humps, and just generally unusual appearance, make perfect candidates for the inspiration behind the legend. Number 1. The Jackalope The jackalope is a mythical animal in North American folklore. It's described as a jackrabbit, but with the horns of an antelope. Researchers believe the myth of the jackalope started with the Native American Huichol people, while the more realistic theory is that the jackalope was created by a man named Douglas Herrick from Wyoming. After a successful rabbit hunt, Douglas went to a taxidermy shop, purchased a pair of antlers, and then mounted them onto a rabbit's head. He then sold that oddity for $10. 
Afterward, the idea of horned rabbits in America grew way out of control until they turned into fearsome critters that could mimic human voices and attack lumberjacks. In the early days of the settlers, people were legitimately scared of the jackalope. Woodsmen believed that if they weren't careful, a jackalope would come out of the woods and gore their shins with their sharp horns. And here's the thing. There is something called papillomavirus, a virus which can infect jackrabbits and cause growths on top of the rabbit's head. The growth is caused by a parasite, which creates a horn on the top of the rabbit's skull. And some believe this may have actually been the beginning of the jackalope legend, since it is a very real and horrifying condition. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite potentially real mythical monster? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.